Hello friends. Have a good day. So we'll start uh, part B bit. Uh, that is a uh, drawing of uh, riveted joints. So before we want to start this session, uh, that is what uh, drawing of riveted joints are. Uh, let us uh, look out what is the rivets and what are the materials are used to manufacture the rivets and different type of rivets uh, what is the meaning of riveting and what is the meaning of uh, caulking and pulling as well as uh, types of riveted joints okay. so now types of riveted joints is the thing you need to carry in lab work types of riveted joints you need to carry in lab works that is what a drawing of different types of riveted joints okay a drawing of different types of riveted joints now rivet is a uh, mechanical member uh, which is a fastener so fastener uh, already you come across a uh, the uh, that is what uh, bolt and nut now bolt and nut is a temporary fastener but the rivet is a permanent fastener if you once you form the riveting over the parts you have joined you can't unassemble it or you can't disassemble it if you want to make a disassemble you need to damage the rivet that is why a rivet is a riveting is used to form a permanent fastening now let us uh, look out here this is a rivet the contents are it is a head it is a body or shank this is a tail now a rivet adding process it is what on one side already you have a head here okay this head is hold with the help of a backup dia it is held with the help of backup dia now this tail portion is going to be converted into head this tail portion is going to be converted into head with the help of forming dia with the help of forming dia now look at this is a real uh, practical picture so the bottom is what a backup dia already it has been now uh, uh, held with the help of uh, backup dia now the tail is heated to certain temperature tail is heated to certain temperature and forming dia is applied over this uh, heated portion that is what heat heated tail then this tail is going to be converted into head shape that is what by the use of uh, forming dia okay. now you have an, another two process uh, in a riveting that is what uh, caulking and pulling caulking and pulling are used to make uh, the riveted joint as a leak flow a riveted joint as an leak flow that means uh, if you use the riveted joint for uh, pressure vessels uh, that should not be in leak proof because it is going to contain uh, fluid sometimes uh, it may be with a normal pressure sometimes it may be of a high pressure so to make the joint as a leak proof okay so you must form this uh, pullering as well as caulking i have two tools here so caulking tool is mainly used on edges where it is going to merge the edge with the bottom surface or the another plate and similarly here the caulking tool used to make the rivet is to be uh, sealed tighted here that means you should not have any uh, gaps here okay now pulling is another one so where you need to form the straight portion of uh, the plate to some uh, inclined portion so where it can compress uh, the some material over some material over the rivets okay that means this uh, portion should not be should not have any leak here okay 
Now this uh, below shore figure shows the uh, different types of rivets here. Different types of rivets. So you are going to get a different type of rivets. One is a snap head, another one is cone head, flat head. And uh, uh, you will get a different type of uh, rivets here. Now rivets are, uh, different type of rivets are named based on the, what is the head formation here? How the head has been formed? Whether it has a form with a flat, it has a form with a groove, whether it has a conical shape or it has a spherical shape. So you'll get a different type of uh, rivet heads here. Oh, sorry, rivets. Uh, rivets are classified mainly on the shape of head. Okay. Now these are the practical uh, examples. So where you have a uh, steel structure which has been now. Uh, fastened with the help of rivets here okay now this is what a steel structure you can just observe here all these are uh, rivets here okay here also you can just observe so now the fabrication is done with the help of rivets entire steel structure this is one is a steel structure now this is what a boiler joint this is also a boiler joint now you can just observe now these are the rivets here these are the rivets okay now how are you going to get the dimensions of rivets and uh, how many number of rivets are required and uh, what is the size of the rivet uh, diameter and what type of uh, joint you need to use. All these are going to come across uh, when you have the practical data. So you now based on practical data you need to design the riveted joints. You are going to learn that one in uh, machine design one. Okay. So now, coming to this uh, types of riveted joints, now we are going to get uh, mainly two types of riveted joints here. Mainly we are going to get a two type of joints here. Okay. So one is what uh, it is a lap joint. Another one is a butt joint here. Another one is a butt joint. Okay. Now oh, again this uh point butt joint is classified as an uh, two way. It is what for there you are going to use a single cover or you are going to use a double cover here. Okay. Again, these uh, classifications are uh, done uh, based on uh, the number of rows you are going to provide for the joint. Okay. Example whether you want to go for a single rivetage or whether you want to go for a double rivetage or whether you want to go for a triple rivetage or whether you want to go for a quadruple rivetage okay now again you can classify these uh, lab joints into two way one is what a placement of the rivets whether they have a continuous or the placement of rivets are zigzag. Placements of rivets are zigzag. Now, if you are using an only single rivetted lap joint, if you are going for only single rivetted lap joint, then that single rivetted lap joint must be of a continuous type. Okay. Now, you may get uh, zigzag riveting in these three cases. That is what. Uh, in double rooted, in triple rooted, as well as in quadruple rooted. Now, similarly in butt joint, so you may get a single rooted, you may get double rooted, triple rooted. Okay. Similarly, here in double cover also, you may get single rooted, double rooted, as well as triple rooted. single rivetted, double rivetted, 
and a triple rivetted. Okay. Now again in this uh, both cases you may get the placement of rivets as a continuous or you may get a zigzag here. Okay. Continuous or a zigzag. Now let us notify the empirical proportions for uh, riveted joints. Okay, so now based on the uh, plate thickness, uh, you need to connect or you need to join. Uh, you need to find out uh, the diameter of a rivet. Okay? Now diameter of rivet should be greater than or equal to six root t. Okay? So in this case, where t is the thickness here. T is a thickness okay. now longitudinal pitch P equal to greater than or equal to 3D margin M equal to 1.5D transverse pitch uh, is 0.8P and transverse pitch is 0.6P again it is a what type of riveting whether it is zigzag riveting or chain riveting so this chain riveting is also called as a continuous riveting. Continuous riveting, okay. Zigzag riveting. So zigzag riveting uh, transfer switch is PT equal to 0.6P. And uh, butt joint, if you have a single cover, then thickness of cover plate T1, it is taken as 1.125 times of T. Now, butt joint if it is a double cover T1 equal to T2 equal to what 0 0.7 T here 0 0.T1 equal to T2 equal to 0 0.7 T or 0.8 T or you can go for 0 0.75 T okay 0 0.75 T okay. now let us uh, draw one simple diagram here So now I'll draw single riveted uh, lap joint, okay, single riveted lap joint. I'll just draw a rough diagram for representation of uh, the terminologies, what I've seen in uh, the empirical relation. Okay. Now what is a lap joint? So lap joint is a one where one surface of plate is going to be placed over under surface of plate. Okay. Now let us take this is a one plate. Okay. This is one plate. Now another plate is placed exactly over this one. exactly over this one okay. now it is going to be placed here now this is what uh, thickness of plate you are going to join in lap joint, so surface of one plate is placed over the surface of another. What I noted here, I noted single rooted lap joint. Single rooted lap joint means, so to join these two plates, you need to use only one row of rivet. Okay. This is a rivet. Now this should not be hatched in real drawing. Now for your understanding purpose I'm just ha making some uh, highlight here now this is what snap head rivet okay. now the terminology one is over thickness now the distance which is measured from edge to the center of this rivet 
is termed as a margin here is termed as a margin so margin m equal to 1.5 d 1.5 d now this is what d is the diameter of rivet now d is going to be calculated based on the relation and means formula it is 6 root d 6 root d now you have an uh, snap head rivet here height of this snap head rivet is 0 0.8 d 0 0.8 d okay. and uh, sorry this is 0 0.7 d 0 0.7 d and the diameter of this snap head is 1.6 d okay the diameter of a snap head is 1.6 d otherwise i'll draw here uh, another separate uh, diagram for rivet now this is what diameter now this is height of the rivet head is 0.87 d now this is what a diameter of uh, the snap head this is how much 1.6 d okay now let us go for a uh, top view You must draw at least three number of rivets. Okay? At least three number of rivets here. Now these diameters are same, not a different. Okay? Now distance from one rivet to another rivet, it is called as a pitch. Okay? This is what pitch. It is called as a longitudinal pitch. This is called as a longitudinal pitch. So now pitch is three times of diameter, three times the diameter of the rivet. Okay. Now this is what a single rooted lap joint. In single rooted lap joint, you are going to get only the margin distance for upper plate and margin distance for the lower plate. Okay. Now let us go for a double rooted lap joint. Again, I will draw two plates here. One is upper plate, another one is a lower plate. is a double riveted lap joint okay. right this is what double rooted lap joint this is what upper plate 
this is what lower plate either you can say plate 1 or plate 2 thickness Now let us specify the dimensions here. Okay. Now distance from one row to another row it is called as a transfer page. This is margin. Margin distance is what? Distance from hole to the edge of the plate. Now if you look out on upper side this is what? The transfer page and this is what margin now I'll draw in a top view here uh, for this same diagram I want to represent uh, for this uh, same uh, double rooted lap joint I will just show uh, continuous as well as zigzag okay. now for uh, drawing of a uh, top view and front view are should be in a correlation not somewhere if you draw on a front view exactly below front view you must have a top view or don't somewhere One rivet is here, one rivet is here, okay. okay. Now this uh, riveting is called as a uh, chain riveting or uh, continuous riveting. Chain riveting or continuous riveting now this is a longitudinal pitch p equal to 3d and a transfer switch as you noted uh, for transfer switch now this is what a transfer switch pt equal to 0.8 times of p suppose uh, if you need to draw the zigzag now for this zigzag, uh, the transfer pitch is what? Uh, 0.6 times of the P. 0.6 times of the P. Okay. Now the position of rivets uh, in zigzag are in a diagonal. This is what zigzag. Now in zigzag, the transfer pitch is how much? Transfer pitch PT equal to 0 0.6 times of P. 0 0.6 times of P. Now the rivets are placed here exactly at a distance of P by 2. 
now as you need to maintain the longitudinal pitch p in a one row from one rivet to another rivet p equal to 3d but if you look out the orientation is what in a zigzag manner now from one rivet to another rivet the longitudinal distance is what it is p by 2 okay? but if you consider an only one row if you consider only one row you can just check out here distance has to be p if you consider one row i will go for another row here second row i will consider this one now you can check here dimension is it is what p here also it is what right okay now i'll go for uh, the drawing of a uh, butt joints here okay. i'll first draw a single rooted butt joint here single rooted butt joint with a single cover single rooted butt joint with single cover and now in butt joints the plates are placed in such a way that one edge of the plate is attached to the another edge of the plate now this is one plate now this edge is uh, attached to the edge of another plate here Now this is the placement of uh, plates. Now how we can uh, join these two plates? Now joining is done with the help of cover plates here. With the help of cover plates. Now this is what? Cover plate. This is cover plate. This is plate 1. This is plate 2. Now to get the connection between plate 1 to plate 2, you need to go for adding a cover plate here. Adding cover plate. Now this edging has to be of an hour, 45 degree or 60 degree. Okay. Now how the joint takes place? First you need to place one rivet in this uh, plate 1, 2, sorry, plate 2 and the cover plate. Next, you need to draw, uh, you need to place one more rivet here. Now, you go for forming rivet head on tail side. How the connection is done? Now, this uh, plate 2 is made and fastening with this cover plate. Okay. Now this cover plate is made a fastening to the plate 1 with the help of this rivet. Now how many rivets you got here? One rivet, one rivet here and the rivet here. Okay. That means if you consider any one side, either to the left or right, you are going to get in one rivet. That is what single rivet. But to make the joint of a plate 1 to plate 2, in case of butt joint, you need to add up a cover plate. That cover plate is fixed to the both plate, placing each rivet on one plate. Okay. Now let us go for uh, its a top view. Now this is cover plate. Now this is what plate 1, now 
this is what plate one this is plate two right now if you draw here Now regarding dimensions, in this case you will get a margin distance for each plate. This is what M. This is also M. If we consider here, this is also M. And here, this is also M. Okay. Now width of cover plate required. It is 4m here. Okay. Again, dimensions. This is a longitudinal pitch P. Okay. Longitudinal pitch P. This is what single riveted but joint with a single cover. Can I go for a uh, double cover, double riveted butt joint here? Yes. Double cover, double riveted butt joint. So let us uh, place first plates here. Okay. Then you need to place two covers here. One is top cover, another is bottom cover. Now in this case, uh, the thickness of covers is the same. It's so what T1 equal to T2 equal to 0.75. For layer we are not noted. Now the thickness of cover plate, uh, if you are using a single cover plate, then this thickness is what T1 equal to 1.125 times of T here. Okay. 1.125 times of T. Now this is what double cover, double rooted but joint. Now let us uh, on each side we are going to get a two number of rivets here. On each side, you are going to get a two number of rivets. Right. Now we'll just uh, make hatching. Hatching should be of an, uh, a different uh, size for cover plates, and orientation is also a different. If you go on for one side right hand, you go for another side as a left hand hatching. Not same for both. Now we'll go for uh, dimensions here. Now this is what margin. Okay. This is what uh, transverse pitch. This is again margin. This is again margin. This is transverse pitch. Again this is margin here. Right? Now I'll go for uh, drawing a top view here I 
as it's not possible for it to me show the bottom side If you go on for drawing these diagrams in uh, solid edge, you can complete a single diagram. You can take maximum time of uh, 25 minutes to complete a single diagram here. Maximum time is uh, 25 minutes, not more than that one. Just you need to go for uh, using a copy offset options only. Now this is what uh, continuous type. Again, if you want to go for zigzag, then you just uh, go for half distance on either side. 